everyone, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and this is Phasmophobia's Grafton Farmhouse. Except, well, actually, it's not. You see, I've spent around seven hours of my precious remaining time on this earth using Valheim's building tools to recreate Phasmo's Grafton Farmhouse as closely as possible, and in this video I'll be showing you how I did it before giving you a full spooky tour to see just how accurate my final build ended up being. So first up, I needed to find a location. In Phasmophobia, Grafton Farmhouse is situated in the middle of some spooky woods, and this wooded area in the meadows here felt just like the right spot. The only trouble with this area though is that it was very hilly indeed, so a good portion of my time building this recreation was unfortunately spent flattening the land around this spot. With a big chunk of land flattened, I then decided to place down a few items to help me judge the sizes, so I laid the foundations of the Phasmo truck and used my hoe to create the pathway leading to the farmhouse. With that done, I started work on the front porch, and it was really important at this point that I got the size and position of that porch and the front door as true to that of Phasmo's farmhouse as possible. By doing this, I could ensure that the framework of the Valheim house I was making would be that of a similar scale to the original. Now, at this point, I realised I was going to have to level off a rather sizeable amount of land if I wanted to actually make this dream house a reality. Trouble is, levelling the ground is incredibly boring and time-consuming, and I have the attention span of a gnat, so I decided to take a break from that to build up the ghost hunting truck a bit. This wasn't a particularly difficult thing to build, but I was proud of these dinky little shield tyres that I pinned to the side for extra realisms. Toot toot, Viking flippers! From there, I continued building the front of the farmhouse. To try and match this spot on, I used two pieces of reference material. This Grafton farmhouse map, which I found on the Phasmophobia wiki page, and a video that I'd previously recorded of me inspecting each room in Phasmo. Using these, I was able to pretty accurately judge the positions and lengths of the windows and rooms of the ground floor, and therefore, the exact dimensions of the farmhouse. Which, at this point, I was coming to realise with a sinking feeling in my gut, was going to be massive. With the prospect of more land flattening looming, I took a quick break to lay some fencing down and make sure that the approach to the farmhouse was as accurate as possible. Thankfully, like the wood used for building the walls and the floors, the fencing in Valheim is spookily similar to the materials that are used in Phasmo, so that went down pretty easily. The next few hours then were spent chopping and flattening and flattening and chopping, and then, for a treat, there was even more flattening and chopping when I realised that I needed to extend the farmhouse by an extra room. So I'll skip past all of that boring stuff and go on to my first room decoration. Now I chose the kitchen as the first room to fully decorate, and this was even before I'd laid the full foundations for the house, as with three doors coming off of the kitchen, if I got the proportions and layout of this room right, it would be good confirmation that I'd nailed the scale of the entire building. Anyway, adding some frames to the window was the first step, then I placed some banners on either side for a cool curtain effect, and then I went to work placing down props. I tried to do this as accurately as possible, placing a table where there's a table in Phasmo, workbenches where there are countertops in the kitchen, and I even built my own shelving unit, which I then decorated with Christmas presents, or Yule Clap as they're known in the game. After everything had been placed down, I flew up into the sky to give it a final inspection, and, happy with the results, I carried on with the rest of the house, and, following the formula for decoration and spacing that I'd learnt from the kitchen, I flipped from between building and furnishing rooms to levelling out even more land for the build. So here's a fun little trick. I noticed that the dining room table in Phasmo had a plant on it in the centre, so in an effort to recreate this as best as I could, because there's no potted plants in Valheim, 
I placed a Christmas tree right on the ground and built the dining room table over the top of it, so that the tip of the tree protruded from the top of the table to create the illusion of a small plant. It's a silly little detail, but I think it adds way more personality to this recreation, just like how I've added shields to the walls in places where picture frames appear in Phasmo. In fact, in this room I also tried to recreate the piano with a stack of stone blocks, and I used a small white present for the telephone on the side table, which is something I repeated in other places where telephones can be found in Phasmo. After a fair few hours of building and decorating, it was finally time to move on to the upstairs of the farmhouse. Because there are fewer rooms up here, I expected it to be a little bit easier than the ground floor, and most of the time it was. The staircase went up really easily and it fit perfectly, and the shape of the rooms up above were pretty easy to mirror thanks to the floor plan and the video reference materials that I was using. But I did have a few problems with placing stone here. In other rooms I'd place down stone to mimic radiators and toilets, but on this level stone just wouldn't sit on the wood without crumbling away, so I had to improvise and use wooden iron poles instead. One of the trickiest parts of this build came right near the end when I was constructing the storage room at the back of the house and I had to put a roof over the top of it. Due to the height and width of the roof, plus the fact that I'd not exactly been that diligent with the framework, the roof panels kept slowly collapsing in on themselves, which was mega aggravating, especially once I tried to then extend the roof over the entire farmhouse. Still, with a lot of sweat and tears, it kind of worked in the end, and I guess these few missing roof panels just make it look all the more authentic and broken, right? Anyway, with the building work finally finished and all the rooms decorated, all that was left for me to do were add a few finishing touches to the exterior. To make things look even more true to the original, I added a camper van made out of stone right at the entrance, of course giving it teeny tiny shield wheels for added realisms, and then I used pumpkin heads and a maypole in the back garden to recreate Phasmo's spooky pumpkin patch and scarecrow. So, with those final pieces in place, I was finally happy that my build was complete. So, I installed a first-person mod and started exploring the farmhouse. And you can see exactly what that looked like in the following video. For this tour, I've replaced Valheim's audio with Phasmo's audio for extra spookiness. And in the top left corner, I've recorded the exactly the same walkthrough in Phasmophobia, and I'm going to put it picture in picture up there so you can see just how accurate my recreation actually is. So sit back, relax, enjoy the tour. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel while you're watching it. And most importantly, don't get too scared. Goodbye. We've arrived. Check the equipment and get set up before investigating. And remember to check the whiteboard for help. Nothing to report, but it looks like whoever was here left in a hurry.